I, I think America is a place of optimism. You had to be an optimist to think that we could defeat one of the world's great powers and gain our independence. We would never have been able to win the Revolutionary War if it were not for the contributions of African Americans and Native Americans. And that wasn't always uh, something that was pointed out in, in the history books that I had to deal with in the 50s and 60s. So I wanted to change that dynamic, and I think that that's uh, what this should be about. Fall, 1781. Black patriot James Armistead has risked life and limb to deliver vital intel to the Continental Army, leading to Britain's surrender. James Armistead is um, really celebrated by Lafayette and Washington because he provides critical information that leads to the victory at the Battle of Yorktown. Armistead identifies so closely with the revolution, he will one day take the name of his celebrated French commander. But tragically, while the new nation has won its freedom, James Armistead Lafayette has not won his. He applies for his freedom. He believes that the service that he's provided to the American army has been crucial and that because of that, he deserves to be a free man. But he is told that because he was a spy and not a soldier, that his freedom is not something that is deserved. The way that they tried to re-enslave James Armstead was very shameful. What he contributed to uh, the efforts of the Continental Army cannot be uh, minimized. In the newly formed United States of America, slavery is still legal and a way of life, especially in the South, where many black soldiers are denied their freedom, just like James Armistead. But in the North, the seeds of abolition are already sprouting, thanks to the courage of an enslaved woman named Mum Bet, who fights her war of independence in a Massachusetts courtroom. She takes this idea of uh, natural equality that's embedded in the state constitution of Massachusetts and says that this applies to me. And if all men are actually born free and equal, then I cannot be enslaved. And the court in Massachusetts agrees. In victory, Mumbet changes her name to something new and entirely fitting, Elizabeth Freeman. She's not the only person that does this. There are men whose surnames are Freeman and Liberty and Self. And how powerful is that to think about these people of African descent who are literally trying to claim this status with their names? Her court case, her ability to win her freedom would prompt all kinds of legislation for the future. It became the legal bedrock of abolition. In my eyes, if it's possible for the entire African-American experience during the Revolutionary War to be summed up in one quote, it's something Elizabeth Freeman once said. Anytime, anytime while I was a slave. If one minute of freedom had been offered to me. And I had been told I must die at the end of that minute. I would have taken it just to stand one minute on God's earth, a free woman. I would. I would. I would. Amazing. Honestly, I'm kind of speechless. <laughs> she really meant it. She really meant it. I think it just says something about the depth of loss and the feeling that there is something out there that's so precious that even to grasp it for a moment is better than to be deprived of it interminably. Elizabeth Freeman's own words remind us what was at the center of the American Revolution and of life for black men and women living in the 18th century, that freedom was always on everyone's mind. What blacks have contributed to make America a great nation are very significant, and I hope that uh, we can get to the point where everybody's contributions uh, will matter. Thomas Jefferson's contributions uh, will matter, and. Christmas Attic's contribution won't matter. And uh, that's how it should be, because this is one nation. And I hope that uh, we can continue to build it.